path you choose, no matter what dreams you have, you have got to do whatever it takes to continue your education after high school. College graduation has never been more valuable than it is today. College is a great opportunity to succeed in the workforce to make a long-lasting career. But with the current economy becoming more and more competitive, it is less of an encouraged choice and more of a necessity for an entry-level position. This means more students than ever are attending schools, and this major stress on the system is exposing flaws in its foundation. Schools that have been hard to get into are now even harder to get but into. To get even more competitive for students wanting to attend UT Austin. But how flawed really is the college admission process? The number of students applying as undergraduates straight out of high school in fall of 2017 is an estimated 20.4 million. That number is 5.1 million more people than the previous fall. While those numbers may look optimistic for the future of education, there is a major problem. As more and more students apply to college, the number of acceptances are staying the same. Every year, we as a nation come closer and closer to reaching the point where the total number of applicants exceeds the total number of spots available for acceptance. Already, the competition is rising. Let's start by looking at the actual process. Most colleges use a common application to get the information they want from a student, including things like GPA, rank, qualification for financial aid, extracurriculars, work experience, race, gender, SAT and ACT scores, the list goes on and on. This level of competition can almost be overwhelming, especially when you're competing with those 20.4 million. Just like I've had, a, I've had amazing students in the past, right? Um, who didn't get in some places that they really loved. They really wanted to be there um, and like had their whole lives kind of wrapped up in that. And so the process of, of making sure all the boxes are checked, right? And there's a never ending list of boxes to check. It seems like, oh, okay, GPA, oh, okay, that's good. Okay, did I take challenging courses? Okay, that's good. You know, oh, did I do extracurriculars? Oh, I was the captain of this. I was the president of that. Um, oh, I made a club, like you know, right? creating some organization or fundraiser. Oh, did I volunteer enough? Do you know? Did I have enough involvement in church? Did I do that? And it, it makes me wonder. Okay, when do you get to to kind of be kids, right? And. I'm afraid that gets lost. So, walking into the process, I was pretty optimistic about it because I would worked like all four years of my high school career to sort of get to a point where I would get into the schools that I wanted to. I had like the GPA, I had the stats for my standardized test scores. You know, holistically too, I had like the extracurriculars, I was a good writer. So, walking into it, I was very confident that I would, I would get into the schools that my scores and GPA met up with. And, I mean, it turned out to be the complete opposite. A study by College Board, a major proponent for all things university from AP to SAT, reveals the increasing gap of students applying and the amount of students that colleges will accept. The study showed that while colleges experienced an 81% increase in first-time, first-year degree-seeking applicants, the admission rate decreased from 31% to 22%. This puts an added stress on students, as the atmosphere surrounding college is more competitive than it ever has been before. For the last 13 and a half years or so, I've lived and worked in China. I just moved back to America in August. While I was over there, I was working some as a school counselor uh, for several years and a few other jobs in a small private school in Shanghai. I taught university English before that in China for a little while. I've Spent time in the Air Force, I have a couple of master's degrees, clinical mental health counseling, education, other things like that. I went to college myself on scholarship one time and uh, know the pitfalls of losing scholarships and not being able to go back to that school <laughs> and then going through different routes and different pathways to complete my education. But in the last 15 years or so, I guess I really enjoyed helping students figure out what it is they want to do and then figure out ways to get there. Oh, wow. Um, 
I guess my opinion's a little complex in some ways. Um, in some ways, I, I, I hate it, just kind of honestly. In other ways, I know why it has to be the way it is, sort of. The difficulties of getting in, uh, I see it all the time, right? Kids that, really great kids, really good students even, um, but the numbers are just so stacked against them uh, that it that it's really difficult. And, and sometimes, right, students or parents maybe overshoot their expectations too. So just the idea that you're just kind of pushed into it and then you have to do all of these processes throughout high school to really feel confident. It's, it's all encompassing and I wish you had the chance to be kids a little bit more. And it isn't going to get any better. One study predicted that from 2001 to 2021, admission rates at Stanford would drop 10.8%, from 15.5% to 4.7%, and admission rates at Harvard would drop 7.1% from 12.3% to 5.2%. My name is Alina, and I'm currently a tutor specifically for math and reading at Gideon, which is a learning center. I tutor kids aged five all the way to 10th grade. I've been working there since August of 2017. Um, well, I don't help like those little kids obviously with college admissions, but I'm sure that the reason why parents sign up their kids for lessons and being tutors that so they have a easier time in the future with college admissions. And I do tutor kids who are going into 11th grade. They're taking multiple AP classes and they ask me sometimes what classes I should take. And I tell them, yeah, you should take as many AP classes as you can so that colleges can see your rigor. And even kids who are really young, who are in you know, fifth grade and sixth grade, they ask me, like, I really want to go to an Ivy League school. Do you think that I can get in? And I just tell them, you know, it's a really random process. So the best way that you can prepare is just doing everything that you can in all aspects of your life, academics, which is why they're even here, right? Getting tutored, taking time out of their day to basically be the best. And then extracurriculars, of course, just be perfect, which is kind of crazy to ask someone. This overcompetitiveness is putting extreme stress on the students. We surveyed 60 students at Plano Senior and 44% said that on a scale of 1 to 5, they felt a 5 on how stressed school had made them. On the same survey, 62% also said that they felt school was a 5 in terms of competitiveness. The problem is widespread due to the fact that many high schools tailor their curriculum towards college readiness and admissions. So high school becomes harder and students feel more and more pressure to do better in their classes. Sure. So I'm a professor at SMU. Uh, I've been a professor at both large state schools and private schools for 20 years. I teach advertising. I have a bachelor's and a master's in psychology and, and marketing and a PhD in advertising. I think the one thing that, that I see in students is they're way over scheduled and they care way too much about grades. Grades become the be all end all and employers do not necessarily have that viewpoint. And in fact, I'll bring in employers quite often and they say they've never looked at their out of college GPAs. But while you're in school, it becomes the criteria and the be all end all for students. I, and I don't know to what extent that's trained into high school students because that's so important for getting into colleges from high school. You know, where even in, in Plano, where we're at, where people are playing the AP game and the not taking classes or not taking them in certain semesters because they're not worth that extra GPA, which is not, as a statistician, is not indicative of difference between people's abilities or, or their performance in college. You know, you'll never, you'll never see that direct correlation there. So I, I find that that probably is problematic for students who are trying to do so. But just the stress levels just kept going and kids feeling pressured to to cheat or lie on their applications, to make up stuff, to just go overboard with extracurriculars and stuff just to try and look good on a piece of paper. So an admissions officer will put them in this pile instead of that pile. Um, so yeah, the stress level really goes up. And for some kids, they just don't try at all then. 
because they see like the top kids really killing it, you know, and it seems like, oh, well, well they'll probably get, I'm not even gonna. So it kind of creates an imbalance and both sides are stressed. The ones who are really adamant about it, achieving well and the other ones who are maybe on the bubble that just kind of give up, but they're both still stressed out. Yeah, it's tough. In a study done by Frontiers in Psychology, researchers surveyed and interviewed 128 students about their stress levels and coping strategies. It was found that 49% of students reported feeling, quote, a great deal of stress, end quote, on a daily basis, and half reported doing three or more hours of homework per night. This stress is incredibly damaging to students' mental health. In that same survey, 26% of students noted that they had been diagnosed with depression. That's over four times the national average of 6%. Boris Young managed a 4.6 GPA and was ranked sixth at Plano West when he graduated in 2017. While this sounds incredible and definitely noteworthy, Boris explains in a Facebook post the true cost of his achievements. Quote, I came to realize that my rank had cost me more than just hard work. My chronic sleep deprivation had left me perpetually lightheaded and I grew nauseous and disoriented at the slightest bit of physical exercise. End quote. He explains his constant anxiety over assignments and tests, stemming from the surrounding pressure to be perfect in order to get into a top college, Stanford in particular. The results came and unfortunately, Boris wasn't accepted. Boris recalls how he found himself with a pair of scissors in his hand and contemplating whether the blade was sharp enough to carry out the deed. He had to go through the process of mentally detaching himself from his grades, finding out who he was, and learning how to be happy again. Stories similar to Boris's are becoming all too common in the U.S. as well as in the rest of the world. This constant pressure to perform perfectly is a contributing factor to a rise in anxiety and depression among today's youth. Not only are you competing with other students around the nation, the competition can be even higher among your own school. I know that it it seems like, at least for some colleges, universities, they don't want to take too many students from one particular high school. So my son, he applied at Pepperdine and got a couple of his friends from from his high school to apply too. But they had slightly higher GPAs and a little bit better stuff going on in their applications. So one of them got in. He didn't get in. So he was bummed out a little bit. But then the kid that got in didn't even go. Wow, I wonder if he hadn't applied, if I had got Like, all those little what-ifs too. This can lead to a divide between students, as they see each other as competition rather than their peers. You definitely can see sometimes the pressure that getting 100% and not falling behind and comparing yourselves constantly to other people. It's funny because some of the kids, when they pass a book, they'll like look and ask, what level are you on now? And they're trying to just compete with each other at already such a young age. I can definitely see some root of pressure already starting to grow in like really young kids. And the level of competitiveness varies depending on the region. In Texas, there is an auto-admit policy for the top 10%, and in some select schools, that's all the way to 6%. Unfortunately, the difference between who makes up the top 6% and districts across the state varies greatly by the quality of education. Um, But I will say, like, when I first found out that I would be at Plano Senior and I I split time here and at Plano West, I started looking online, researching the schools a little bit before I showed up. Like, top 50 percentile I was looking at. At one school, it was like 3.6, another school was like 3.4, 3.5 or something was top 50 percent. Man, because I know there are some smaller schools and smaller districts where, okay, there's a hundred kids graduating. So their top 7%, their seven best kids probably wouldn't be in the, from what I've seen, right? I don't want to say some other district is bad or something like that. Top seven in a small rural high school or small private high school even isn't quite the same as top 7% in a school that's graduating 1,500 students. So yeah, top seven is hard to just compare across the board, I think. This also doesn't take into account the way that the system favors the wealthy and privileged. Students whose families have more expendable money for college prep courses such as KD can afford to get good SAT scores or students paying for tutors can get their grades up. It doesn't just stop at supposedly merit-based qualifications either. 
One of the most controversial parts of college admission would have to be affirmative action, where many colleges take into account race to give advantages to underrepresented minorities. This is extremely helpful to keep campuses diverse, but it has a downside. The main group of people that affirmative action negatively affects would have to be the overrepresented minorities. While affirmative action is attempting to aid students whose race could negatively impact their academics, the result is that the achievements of Asian students are undervalued due to their race, and they are expected to do more just to be on an equal playing field. There are no guarantees at all for the entire process. Regarding myself, I think I definitely had the qualifications to get into these schools, but I didn't have the right race to sort of tick it off my application. That was sort of disheartening, just because like your entire career in high school can be impacted by things that you can't control, like your race. If I compared myself to my peers who were of different ethnicities, like who were Hispanic or African American, and who had significantly lower stats regarding like GPA and standardized test scores, and had gone to schools that I was rejected from, I think on that comparison, I definitely was at a disadvantage being Indian. And being Indian and going into a predominantly male and Asian um, major like economics. This upholding of higher standards for Asian American students is more than just a harmful stereotype. In a 2015 National Health Survey, 15% of Lexington High School students said they had considered killing themselves in the last year. Thinking about it most were Asian and Asian American students, 17% of them, as is the case nationally. Clearly, these higher standards have a real negative impacts on mental health. Currently, efforts are being made in order to make the admission process more holistic and easier. But even more needs to be done to make the process less stressful and fair for students. But with the current methods of admission, not everyone is given an equal opportunity to acceptance, and standards have risen far too high without having devastating consequences on the students. If fixing the flaws of the system is important to you, for your own academic career, your students, or your children, it is important to support those working towards realizing the change and pressuring those in power to work towards that change. Groups like the Learning Policy Institute are partnering with the Education Council and are trying to make real change in the admission process. Other programs, like the Common App that was mentioned earlier in the documentary, are working towards making the process easier and more streamlined. We've shown you the flaws of the system. Now, it's your turn to fix them.